I mean, death over and over again. What's the point? Every time I play this game, it just gets tougher and tougher. It like it never ends. It just it just keeps getting worse. I think I'm getting better at the game, and then suddenly I can't even make it out of level one. I'm on fire again, and there's these enemies every single place, and then the music starts ramping up. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing anymore. What is going on? I can't put myself out. I don't have any water. I didn't bring water this time. Oh no. It's happening again, isn't it? Oh. Well, buck up, little camper. I've got some advice for you. Time to do what I do best and tell you what's wrong with you. The problem. The good news is, technically you're not the problem. You've just come into this game with a lot of misconceptions about how to get better at games. Or at least how to get better at this game. Right away from the first moment that you see the Nala logo pop, you should immediately tell yourself, I'm not playing a normal video game. I am playing Noita. I must be prepared. And by be prepared, I mean be prepared. One of the greatest mistakes that players make is lack of preparation before even starting to play the game. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about the most common mistakes that players make that ruin runs. Playing it like it's a platformer or roguelite. While Noita has elements of both roguelikes and platformers, it's both none of those and all of those at the same time. Some of the very common things that we do in platformers is try to go straight through the level, progress linear, do exactly as the game tells us to do, move from one area to the next, to the next, to the next, trying to go to each place that we can, visit, find all the secrets, gather all the gold, one of the other things that we do is we try to defeat every single enemy, go into every single combat situation figuring, well, the game has given us exactly what we need to survive. And if we get beat up a little bit, we're going to be able to heal in the end. That's not how Noita actually works. In fact, Noita is one of the most non-linear games that you'll find hidden in a little package of a linear game. As you can see, the levels are pretty straightforward. You have a flight kind of hovery command that you can do. You have your wands, some of which can get super overpowered, and you go and you kill enemies and you move around avoiding the hazards. But everything in Noita is trying to kill you. Every single thing. So trying to go through every single level right when you encounter it isn't always the best strategy. Playing this as if it's a platformer and hopping from place to place isn't going to do it a lot of times. Same thing goes for trying to play this as if it's a, a roguelite thinking meta progression is going to save you or that there's a heal just around the corner. It's not quite what's going to happen as you progress through the game. In fact, if anything, what you're looking for in the game is to kind of hit critical marks, places where you know you can, can continue from, places of safety. Those are the holy mountains, and we'll get to one of the holy mountains in this video in a second. But I think by and large, one of the major mistakes that people make is thinking that if you play this over and over and over again, eventually, eventually, you'll pick up enough skill where you'll just be able to get to the next level, the next level, the next level, and the next level. Skill isn't going to help you much in this game. So, don't look at it as a platformer. Don't look at it as a roguelite. Look at it as Noita. But let's get specific. One of the things is chasing after gold or resources. Now, gold is very important in the game. When you do get to the Holy Mountains, you're going to need gold to purchase upgrades for your wands, new wands, better wands, better spells, possibly even rerolling your perks. So yes, gold is important, and you want to try to get a certain level of gold for every single biome that you're in. For instance, this first biome that we're in, it'd be a shame to go to the Holy Mountain with less than 200 gold. So yes, you do have to go around and you do have to collect gold, but you don't need to dive head first to pick up every single scrap of gold. There are certain biomes that are better for picking up gold and make it easier for picking up gold. As far as enemies go, you don't want to try to power your way through multiple sets of enemies. One enemy, two enemies at most. Try to take them out one or two at a time. If you start to get overwhelmed, you need to back up into a place that you've already been. Do not back up into dark areas that you can't see. Do not rush forward into dark areas that you can't see. Get in the habit of, once you've killed an enemy, stop. Pause for 10 seconds, wait. 
reevaluate your situation and make a plan. Always have an exit plan. If you're going to go into a new dark area, make sure you know what's behind you and where you can go safely to hide if you have to. Don't back yourself into a corner. Don't run blindly into a mess. Again, patience is key in this game. Patience will be rewarded. The final bad habit in this category is more of a mental habit that people have. Thinking that you will eventually get better at this game, that if you just play it enough, do the levels over and over again, practice the zones, learn every single part of the zone inside and out by yourself, that eventually you'll just be able to make it to the boss and win. While skill does play a role, it does not play as much of a role as you would think. So trying to mash yourself through this game over and over and over again is just going to lead you to despair. The thought that, well, I'll get better if I just keep playing this game. That's not really how you're going to get better. There's a joke in the game that when you die, it's always a skill issue. Of course, that's in almost every game. But especially in Noita, it takes on a rather special significance. Because most of the time, that skill issue isn't actually an issue with your video game skills. It's an issue with your mental habits. Remember... We talked about impatience. You have to learn patience, and part of patience is gonna be our next category. Being a lone wolf. <laughs> Noita is an extremely complicated game. That means that in order to play it and play well, there's gonna have to be a little bit of a learning curve. And the learning curve doesn't involve just going in the game and mashing buttons and flopping around and trying everything you can think of. That also means that you're going to have to pay attention to what streamers do, what content creators do. You're going to have to go to the wiki. You're going to have to do some research. This is not the type of game that you can just go into blind and learn everything that you need to know. This game is so complicated that it has taken people going in and decrypting the code, going through and analyzing and doing deep data dives to figure out many of the mysteries and quests that can and, quite frankly, will be done eventually by you once you get past the, uh, the first hurdle, which is destroying the, uh, the main boss. But even to defeat the main boss, you're going to need all sorts of information that you're not going to be able to glean on your own. Even if you play the game hundreds of hours, there's certain things that you're not going to know without looking them up. The perk system alone has so many hidden features to it, so many weird sorts of synergies and anti-synergies, that if you don't look it up, you're going to ruin a run just by selecting two perks together that separate would be awesome, but together will be disastrous. So you're going to need to do some research. You're going to need to do a lot of research. In fact, you can't be a lone wolf in this game at all. Noita is a community game. One of those few games that without the community, you're probably not going to be able to succeed in even beating the main boss at the end of it. And beating the main boss, quite frankly, is just the tutorial in this game. 90% of the game comes after beating the main boss, and most people who play this game without help of the community will never even get to the point of beating Colmy for the first time. So, don't go at it like a lone wolf. I'm going to go over some of the places that you can find the information that you'll need, and what are some of the benefits of finding that information, and what exactly you'll need to at least get to the point where you can get to the final boss, and once you get there, quite easily defeat Colmy. First off is the Noita Wiki. If you're not using the Noita Wiki to learn everything about the spells, the perks, the different areas and biomes and different strategies, then you're just quite frankly doing it wrong. Then there's content creators like Fury Forged, Let's Suffer Together, and of course, the granddaddy of them all, Dunk or Slam. I mean, just look at this man. There are many others as well, but th look at this guy. Dunk is just probably one of the most invaluable resources that's out there when it comes to Noita. I will put all of these content creators in the description for you to check out. Watch their YouTube videos, watch their streams, watch everything they do, learn everything they put forward, especially things when they give you perk evaluations. Like if you've got a tier list for perks from any of these individuals, you'd better be studying them and watching them, reviewing them over and over again. Not to mention the fact that they're invaluable when showing you special wand builds that you can use, easy ways to kill bosses, and different tips, tricks, and yes, even exploits that you can use to make the game 100% easier for you. You should also join the Noita Discord. If you're not on the Noita Discord, I'd highly encourage joining that as well. The link to that will also be in the description. What should you focus on first? I think the biggest impact that you can find in the game whatsoever 
is finding easy, simple wands that show up in almost every single run. Combinations that can make or break a run for you. Things that allow you to get in and out of the Holy Mountains without destroying the Holy Mountain are especially important. Wands that help you dig to avoid entire zones altogether. More on that in a second. Also, easy ways to take down Colmy are especially important. Even things like where to find powerful spells, how to unlock them in the first place, where to pick them up once you have unlocked them. There are literally hundreds of content creators out there for Noita, each with their own special brand of things that they can teach you. I can't list them all, but you can certainly do a YouTube search and find millions of them. Well, okay, maybe not millions, at least five, maybe 15, but you get the point. Being a loner in this game is not going to benefit you at all. This is a community game. The secrets that are in this game have been learned by the community, have been shared with the community. And quite frankly, I spent 250 hours trying to beat this game until I finally gave up and said, why don't I go learn something first? Within, I'd say, 30 hours of watching a few of their streams and a few of their videos, I had easily beaten Call Me. And once you've beaten Call Me once, you can do it over and over and over again. It's as simple as that. I've watched people suffer for hundreds of hours trying to learn Noita. And the one biggest mistake they have is this right here. They don't want to swallow their pride and go and learn the game from the people that know the game. Personally, it was Fury Forge's minimal slot wand builds, his perk tier list, and also uh, his videos on easy and safe ways to beat the bosses in this game that gave me the most bang for my buck. Well, that and of course, watching Dunker Slam every single night he's playing Noita. The great thing about watching a live stream is that you can ask questions and most of the Noita streamers are super friendly and we'd be willing to answer any question that you have um, as long as you're not rude. So go ahead, avail yourself of all these resources that are out there. It is extremely rare that any individual manages to beat the main run of Noita multiple times and does it easily without the help of the community. Again, that's a super, super rare thing. Maybe you do it once and then you give up the game, but remember, the main run is only 10% of the game. So even if you do beat the main run on your own, you're gonna miss out on what makes Noita super special, which is all the other quests that you can do once you've defeated Colmy. I mean, just look at this map, that little circle part, that's the main run. We're not even talking about the other parallel worlds to the left and the right. 500 different worlds, left and right, on and on it goes. So many things to see outside of that main run. But first, let's stick to our goal. Let's kill Colmy. What else is stopping people from doing that? Ignoring game mechanics. Yeah. Of course, the greatest and most fun game mechanic in Noita is the wand building system. Building wands is absolutely the biggest draw to this game. You can make wands that are so overpowered that you can do literally hundreds of trillions of damage in one shot. You can make wands that can dig through anything, teleport world to world, magical, wonderful, amazing things. But just being able to build a really good wand doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna even make it to Colmy. You need to focus on all the game mechanics. And when I say all the game mechanics, I do mean all of them. People many times will build a wonderful wand and will end up dying just for lack of having a water potion on them. Or they'll die because they didn't go through and make sure they deactivated some of the explosives in a run. Or they got toxic sludge on them. There's so many ways to die in Noita. You have to pay very close attention to not just the wands and not just the perk system but also the potions, the items that are available, things like broken wands. You also need to pay attention to where things are located and where you can find extra spells, better spells, better wands, better potions. Which potions are gonna work in which situations and what sorts of weird complications, what sort of strange synergies can you get by combining potions or using potions on different objects? Most of the time, it's the potions that get ignored. Most of the time, people are pretty good about figuring out the perks and figuring out the wands. But even the perks I do see that 
people sometimes will take the most curious perks in the world over other perks that seem most beneficial. Now, there's hundreds of videos and articles written on the perk system and the potion system. I guess the best advice that I can give you right off the top that's gonna help you out is that when you're looking at perks, the most valuable perks are the ones that are gonna stop you from losing health. The immunity perks and the perks that push projectiles away from you or keep stains off of you or keep you out of trouble, help you move, help you stay clear of certain obstacles. So those are the perks that you wanna look at first. Not the offensive perks. We can make offense with wands. We wanna make sure that most of our perks in general are gonna keep us safe. Same thing with potions. One Ambrosia potion can win a run for you. One invisibility potion can win a run for you. There are many different things that you can find in this game that will help you out. One of the most largely overlooked mechanics in the game, in the beginning, for people who don't understand how Noita works, is Freeze. Freeze not only is going to stop an enemy, but it's going to damage an enemy, and it's going to allow you to go up and kick an enemy and do massive amounts of damage to that enemy most of the time. Some of them are, unfortunately, immune to uh, melee damage. But freezing and kicking things, including Colmy, is one of the most effective ways to get through a run. So don't overlook game mechanics just because you have a super powerful wand that can shred everything on the planet. You have to remember, health is a resource. Spend your health the same way that you would spend anything else. You get a health reset at every mountain, so make sure that you're using your health wisely and you're saving your heals for when you're absolutely going to need them. And always, always, always bring water. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says bring your towel. Noita says bring your water. And of course, this wouldn't be a calm little buddy Noita video if I didn't mention what I think is one of the majorly overlooked mechanics in the game for people that just want to go and beat that main boss, digging. You're going to want to understand the ins and outs of digging very well because, listen, there are many zones in Noita that don't have anything that's really going to benefit you early on in a run. Snowy Depths is just... The risk-reward in that biome is just totally unfair. I consistently avoid Snowy Depths. I avoid it like the plague, and I do that by finding digging. Now, digging is going to allow you to get through certain materials with certain digging spells and other materials you maybe won't be able to get through unless you have the right types. Of course, my preferred method, if you've watched me ever before, is Lumi Drill. Luminescent Drill is going to be able to dig through even the Holy Mountains, even the brickwork. So what I recommend for people learning the game is get a run where you get good enough digging that you can dig to every single teleporter that gets you into a holy mountain. Learn how to dig your way out of a holy mountain without destroying it, that's also important. But you've got to be able to have options. And getting around a zone, in my opinion, and going to the areas that have the free spells, the free wands, the free health upgrades, all of that stuff. If you don't have proper digging, you're gonna have a tough time. Now, once you've broken the seal and you're able to get past Colmy and beat Colmy one time, all bets are off. Try to learn every single way that you can. Try to get through every single zone if you can. But in the beginning, digging and invisibility, avoiding zones, avoiding combat, and just getting to the lower levels, getting better perks, better wands, being able to get gold without getting, uh, getting hurt by digging it out of places. That's what you want to be doing, in my opinion. Like I said, it wouldn't be a video of mine if I didn't mention the digging. Come on, guys. The digging. Don't overlook the digging. Keep digging. You got a bad attitude, son. And last but not least in all of this is mindset. Playing Noita is one of the most enjoyable experiences that you can have playing a video game at least in my opinion. What ruins it for most people is the expectation that you're going to win. You shouldn't go into a Noi to Run expecting to win. You should go into a Noi to Run looking to enjoy it as much as you can. Sometimes dying in Noi to can be more fun than actually winning a run. Trust me, there are so many Noi to videos that are out there of people just getting absolutely wrecked and they have huge view counts that are on them. People love seeing strange and unusual 
Noita deaths. And there are hundreds of different ways that you can destroy yourself in Noita, let alone what the actual game can do to you. Don't let your mindset be about, I have to win, I have to win, I have to win. Take your time, enjoy the game, go slow, explore the areas, have fun, set yourself small goals. I wanna to get to the jungle this time. You know, that could be a small goal that you have. That was my first goal, was to get through and pass through the jungle biome. The first time I did that, I was so psyched that I immediately died and booted up again to play the next run. And of course I died in the first biome, but you have to rinse that off and start again. Once you get to a certain point in Noita, you're gonna start having the failsies, and that's when you kind of put the game down, take a break, walk away, come back, maybe another day, another hour, whatever. Whatever you wanna, just take a little break, but come back with a fresh mindset. Your mindset should always be that when you lose, you should have that desire to boot that game back up and get back in. If you don't, take a break. But it's gonna take a while. Like I said, my first one I think was 250 hours in, but my mindset never really waned. I always looked at it as in, I'm eventually gonna get there. And when I didn't get there, I just went out and learned what I needed to learn in order to get there. And let me tell you, my, my first win took over four hours to complete the run because I was digging around everywhere in the game. Every single place that I could find to get an advantage and I was hiding, I was finding little tricks to gain health. I, I think I even went to parallel worlds first before I went and I fought Colmy. I think I was that determined to beat the game that I was like, I'm gonna power up so hard that there's no way this boss is gonna beat me. And of course, when I got to Colmy, I, I beat him in like two seconds and it was, it was a little anticlimactic, but still happy nonetheless. But a lot of the credit for that win goes to, as we said before, the community for teaching me how to play. Now see, you look at me on the screen here. I'm, I'm almost completely dead. Don't panic, I'm just backing up. See, I'm just showing you. I'll take a look, see what he does. And realize that we have options. We have teleport. We can go back in and we can go get a health bar. There he goes. Yeah, this run actually, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I should probably show you how the, this run ends just so that people don't get disappointed because this, this did not end up in a win, by the way. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling here. The point being, you have to have the proper mindset. So, when something like this happens to you... Okay. Uh, let me grab this one. Freeze. And I think I can just sleep the <laughs> So, when this sort of thing happens to you, basically, you need to get over it and just get on with the next run. Get right back in the game. Part of the thing with Noita is eventually everybody who keeps trying does win the game. And by win the game, I mean beat Colmy. And eventually, once you beat Colmy, you'll be surprised. People just seem to blossom once they've gotten past that first boss. There's a saying again in Noita that beating the main run and beating Colmy is just the tutorial. It's just the beginning. So listen, don't give up, keep going. The only people who don't manage to win this game are giver uppers. And do you really want to be a giver-upper? The answer is no. Epiluge. So now I know a video with such grand designs is trying to tell you the mistakes that Noita players make that prevent them from finishing runs. That sort of video should provide you with something a little bit more concrete than just some Namby Pamby general advice and just trying to give you that spirit of you can do it, just let people help you. Yeah, well, I understand that. But there's not much I can do for you besides give you that advice. You already have everything that you need as a video game player to beat this game. What you don't have is the safety, knowledge, and assurance that you will never beat this game unless you change the way that you approach the game. And that's why the advice has to be kind of general. There's more specific advice that's out there on exactly what perks to pick, on exactly what wants to build, what potions to have, how to beat the bosses and so on. That's been done. But even with that out there, if people don't go look for it and people don't go and try and use those things, they're just gonna sit there and continue to lose. So a video like this is necessary to explain to people that this isn't the type of game that you can win with persistence. The only way you're gonna win this game is with knowledge, patience, 
and perseverance. So go ahead and get on out there and find the resources you need to learn the perk system, learn how to build amazing wands, learn how to avoid deaths, what to do in the zones, where to go, what to avoid, where the special secret stuff is, the free stuff is, the super powerful free stuff, what you can do to ensure that you will win a run. There are, I would say, thousands of ways to beat Colmy. And that's not an exaggeration. There's thousands of ways that it can be done. And listen, people even juice Colmy up to the point where he's got trillions of HP and they can still beat him. HP and resistance out the wazoo, they could still beat him. You can beat a one single heart Colmy that's out there. A one to single orb Colmy, I should say. That's out there, zero orb or one orb. I mean, either way, you can do this. You can win this game, but you don't need to keep practicing. You need to change your practices and how you do things and what you're looking for. I'm going to put a lot of links in the description of things that I find useful, creators that I find useful. So this can be kind of a resources starting point for you. And if you need to come back to this and rewatch it again just for a pep talk, that's kind of what it's all about. So thank you so much for watching, putting up with me and if you do find that this is too general and you want to see something specific, I do have other specific videos, but I wouldn't mind doing a specific topic by request. So if you have something, go ahead, put it in the comments for me. Again, I appreciate you guys. I am calm little buddy. I don't know why. I just am. Thank you for watching. Are you going to do something there, calm, or are you just going to hang around? Get going. Come on. That's better.